standardization and the determination of electrical quantities, <coughs> particularly the fundamental units of measurement, have formed my chief link with the institution of electrical engineers. That work began in the year 1880, 20 years before I became a member of the institution. At that time, doubts had been raised with regard to some of the results raised, uh, reached by the original British Association Committee, which met <coughs> in 1865. The committee was reconstituted. I was asked by Lord Rayleigh to act as secretary, and for the next 20 years carried on experimental work at the Cavendish Laboratory, and was responsible for the issue of certificates of resistance and capacity. At the end of 1899, I came to London as the first director of the National Physical Laboratory, established under the control of the Royal Society by government for the standardization and verifying instruments, for testing materials, and for the determination of physical constants. Leading members of the institution had taken part in the establishment of the laboratory. Mr. Siemens was a member of the committee under whose advice the government had acted. He and Professor Ayrton were members of the general board. It was natural that I should become a member of the institution and that I should turn to them for advice and help in all electrical questions. The resistance and capacity standards of the British Association were installed at the laboratory and Mr. F. E. Smith, now Sir Frank Smith, Secretary of the Royal Society, joined the staff and took part in their determination. The importance of standards began to be recognized. In electricity, thanks to the work of the British Association Committee, there was no doubt as to what the standards should represent. The definitions of the ohm and the ampere and the volt were quite definite and precise. To establish them in concrete form was the the task we set out to accomplish. Professor Ayrton was very much interested in that work. In, 19, in 1897, he and Professor Verimu Jones had described new apparatus for the determination of the ohm, and in the following year they designed a new form of the ampere balance. This was set up at the laboratory in 1903, while in the previous year a generous gift from the Draper's Company and the help from Sir Andrew Noble had enabled Mr. Smith to design a Lorentz apparatus based on Jones' plan. At an international congress held at St. Louis in 1904, attention was drawn to the discrepancies between the laws relating to electrical units in various countries, and a resolution was passed in favor of holding an international conference to consider these. This conference took place in London um, in the year 1908. And for the first time, the distinction was made clear between the CGS units, the ohm, the ampere, and the volt, and the international concrete standards, which within close limits of accuracy may be taken to represent them. The international ohm, the resistance of a certain column of mercury, the international ampere, the current which deposits a certain weight of silver. But it was not only electrical engineers who realized the need for standards. In 1902, chiefly through the efforts of Sir John Wolfberry, the Engineering Standards Committee was set up, and I became a member, concerned at first mainly with helping Sir Frederick Donaldson uh, in the standardization of gauges and screw threads. Two years later, the enthusiasm of Colonel Crompton at the International Congress at St. Louis 1904, led, led to the establishment of the Electrotechnical Commission. As one of the representatives of the government and of the institution, I attended that congress along with the president, Mr. R. K. Gray. And when I succeeded him as president in 1905, it was my pleasant task to bring before the institution the importance of the great effort and to enlist its help freely and generously given in the task of the international standardization of electrical quantities. From that time on, until only a few years since, that work has continued. As chairman of the Committee of the Standardization Association, dealing with electrical questions, I have been brought into very close contact with many distinguished electricians, both at home and abroad. Visits to some of the congresses are among my happiest recollections. In 1913, I was able, in the fourth Kelvin lecture, 
to give an account of the position then reached, a position gained in no small degree by Mr. Smith's epoch-making uh, researches. In all this work, as indeed in everything else, 1914 and the years that followed called a halt. But during that time, and up to some few years ago, my memory, my uh, connection with this institution has been very close. I have followed its progress with interest, and though but few of those with whom I worked are still active, I am happy to count among my kind friends many of its most prominent members.